Hi, and welcome back to another devlog for Untitled Golf Game, my tiny simple arcade-like golf game. Instead of weekly updates, I will try to do this bi-weekly, as I don't feel like I have the time to make enough progress in one week to have something to show, as well as record and edit these videos. Besides programming, I've done a lot of planning and trying to define the core loop of the game, trying to find reasons for a player to continue playing and some enticements for the player to actually return and replay a level. I have a few ideas that I will continue working on and see what I can fit in this project without stepping too far outside of the scope. So, let's have a look at what's actually new in the project this week. One change I found necessary was to actually add a flag, a goal for each level. I went a bit back and forth on this, but decided that the player doesn't have to actually hit the hole to score. As I want to stay true to my arcade-like vision, I don't feel that precision is key here. There's a collider as wide as the hole, so just hitting the flag is enough. As soon as I was done with this, I wanted the response to be a bit more than just falling into the hole and adding to the score. So, when the ball touches the flag, it starts rotating around, moving away from and back too, as well as moving up the pole before smashing down to the ground. When reaching the top, there's some fireworks, and when finally reaching the hole, there's some smoke clouds as well as a subtle camera shake. None of this is final, but rather me testing a few things to see if there's anything I like. And well, I think I like where this is going. I thought about expanding the idea to only play the firework particles if you manage to finish the level under a given number of strokes, and maybe even let your score decide how far up the ball goes. That's all for another day, but I feel like that would add to the arcade-like feeling I'm trying to achieve. Let me know what you think! There's also some collectibles in the game now. I just made a simple star in Blender to test with. They don't do much yet, other than spin around in the world really. If the player hits one, it gets removed and a point is added to the score. None of this really matters right now, since I'm not yet calculating a total score, but the basic functionality is there at least. I haven't spent much time designing the UI yet, but I started adding some basic functionality to prepare for the UI in the game. Holding down the tab key will show your current stats, and the escape key will pause the game and bring up the pause menu. As you can see, this is still really early in the process, as no styling has been done. I've also added some basic zoom functionality. I haven't decided on whether or not this is something I'm going to keep in the final game, as I don't know if there's a reason for the player to be able to zoom in and out yet. As long as it's not hurting the gameplay, I guess I can keep it. Maybe I'll find some use for this later on. And now to a big thing I had to solve, which was all new to me. Let's start with the problem. So, when the ball was behind an object, for example a tree, it got a bit difficult to aim since the player isn't able to rotate the camera by design. I had to find a solution to see through objects, and tried several options but ended up with this. I tried my best to find a suitable tutorial for this, but I couldn't, since most of them were either out of date and not working with the universal render pipeline, or I couldn't find a way to apply the effect on my already existing materials without creating new ones. I talked about this in my last devlog, but I'm using an asset called Realtune from the Asset Store, and I didn't want to directly modify anything in the asset with the risk of my changes being overwritten whenever there's an update available. So, I grabbed some knowledge from what I could find and applied it to a solution of my own. I will be working more on this at a later point. And, there's some other changes that are just too far from being done to even mention really. But I started working on a windmill, which of course isn't going to look like this. But I needed something to test with to see what it looks like if the ball gets stuck inside of it. I've started working on some conveyor belts, but so far I'm only offsetting the material. And there's no logic for how the ball will react when touching one yet. There's also a really basic audio manager in place. I've only added audio for when the player hits a wall so far, but I think it needs more fine tuning and optimizing. That's all for now. I'll probably start working on a Steam page soon, to get one up and running. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but I also like to have a very simple GDD for myself, to keep track of all of my ideas and to avoid scope creep. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.